Jake? Yes. If you get invited for an interview at Cambridge, then that is brilliant news, but it's also quite scary. My name is Jake Wright, I once had a Cambridge interview, and it must have gone reasonably well because now I'm studying computer science at Queen's College. Right, so uh, I'm Dr Rice, and uh, this is Dr Orchard, and Hi. we're going to talk to you for about 30 minutes about why you want to be here and why you want to study computer science. Cambridge invite those applicants who have, according to the website, a realistic chance of being offered a place. So if you've been invited for an interview, then be proud. I hope you've learned by now that there are no trick questions in an interview, and all of those myths you've heard about Oxbridge interviews are just myths. The purpose of an interview is to find out how you think. It's not a test of how much you know, it's to see if you can apply existing knowledge to a new situation. At Queen's, the interviewers will be trying to find out if you're genuinely interested in the subject and have the ability to do well at Cambridge. Most applicants will get two interviews in December. Each interview will usually have two interviewers, but there are many exceptions, so don't worry if yours don't follow this pattern. Nobody can tell you exactly what you're going to be asked in your interview, but that doesn't mean you can't prepare for it. Firstly, what to wear. Wear whatever you feel comfortable in. As long as you look presentable, it doesn't matter what you wear. And you don't have to wear a suit if you don't want to. You're not being assessed on the way that you dress. Before the interview, think about how you'd answer questions like why do you want to study computer science or why do you want to study computer science at Cambridge slash relevant subject and university combination. Okay, so thanks for coming to see us. We're going to talk to you for about half an hour about why you want to study computer science. Uh, um, Dominic and I will both sort of ask you questions. From time to time we will take notes because we're seeing a lot of different people and so don't get freaked out if we start writing or if we don't write. All of these things are not really an indication about how it's going. Just relax and we'll write things down. What you're watching is representative of a computer science interview at Queen's. This is the room I had one of my real interviews in. Today I'm being interviewed by Dr. Rice and Dr. Orchard. Dr. Rice is the Director of Studies for Computer Science at Queen's and Dr. Orchard is a teaching associate at the college. They both gave real interviews at Queen's for Komsky. Dr. Rice interviewed me three years ago. The specific questions that I'm being asked here are not too important because you won't be asked the same things. Many important points are raised during this interview though, the first of which being that you shouldn't worry about what the interviewers are writing down, and you shouldn't try to guess whether the interview is going well or not based on how the interviewers act. Also, bear in mind that most interviewees think that their interview went badly. I thought mine had been a disaster, but apparently not. Also, don't worry about things like whether you should shake the interviewer's hand or not. There is no requirement to do this, and whether you do or not will have no effect on the outcome of the interview. So, um, I see from your maths modules that you've been doing trigonometry, and so um, yeah. maybe you can start us off and uh, draw me a sketch of sine x. Um, okay, so... Sine x is the one that starts at zero, so it's kind of like this. Okay, good. Uh, yep, you've got that right. So um, let's say, for example, that uh, you weren't sure, because there's also cos, right? I'm not sure which one's which. So yeah. what could you do to try and sort of increase your confidence that that's actually sine x and not something different, something else? Um, so trigonometry, uh, it, it works well with like triangles and you could maybe use those. Okay. Um, so uh, sketch, sketch me a triangle and, and show me how it relates to sine. The interview is a conversation between you and the interviewer about the subject you've applied for. There are many different formats that the interview could take. You could be asked academic questions and work through a problem in the interview. In this case, the interview is a lot like a supervision. Supervisions are one of the main learning methods at Cambridge, so the interviewer might try to create that sort of environment to see how you cope. Alternatively, you could have a more general interview. The interview might not even be directly related to your subject. You might be asked about your personal statement, or you could get some combination of this in one single interview. You are likely to get a question that really makes you think, and the interviewer will keep pushing you until you can't do it anymore. So if you get stuck, don't worry, that is kind of the point. Why is that not a good one to try? Um, it's like halfway through the cycle. What happens it's to your triangle when theta is 180? Or X oh, 180. It's, it's gonna be like gonna a, be weird. <laughs> a, 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 a okay. straight line. An important thing to do is to stop and think about your answers to questions before you try to give them. Nobody expects you to already know the answer to everything. In fact, if you just recite the answer to every question that the interviewer has, they can't learn much about you, so the questions might get harder during the interview to force you to demonstrate your ability to work through a new problem. I'm not sure what length I should use for the other sides. So, um, uh, 
what what triangle would you get if you set, for example, this length and this length to be the same? Would you sketch that? Um, so, I said they were just both one. Mm -hmm. Um, this is 45 degrees. Okay, so how, so do you, how do you know that that's 45? Um, because it would be the same as this one and we get... Yep. Well, you could add another one of these triangles on the top, right? Then you've got a square. And so yeah. you know that's 90. Yeah. Okay, so if that's okay. 45, what can you say about sine 45? Um, so it's going to be like this side divided by this side, and if they're the same, then it's going to be 1. So, so what, 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 what is sine of 45 on this triangle, thinking about your equation? Oh, no, it's going to be this side divided by the hypotenuse. Yeah. Okay. So, the hypotenuse is uh, like 1 square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 2. Mm -hmm. So now we get, okay, 1 over root 2. Okay, good. So does that reinforce our confidence in this graph or diminish it? Um, it might reinforce it if I knew what 1 <laughs> over root 2 was. Yeah, well at least it's positive, right? So that's kind of yeah. nice. Making mistakes is completely fine and you're allowed to ask for help. As you're working through the problems, think out loud. Let the interviewers know what's going on in your head. Don't just sit and struggle in silence. Okay. Um, I would like you to sketch for us sine x over x. Um, okay. Uh, why don't you Why don't you start with sketching for us 1 over x? Why is it equals 1 over x? So when this is x, and this is going to be 1 over x, when x is 0, we get 1 divided by 0, so we get uh, the asymptotes here. Mm -hmm. And then it does something like this. Mm -hmm. What about in uh, for negative values of x? Um, okay, so it does like the same thing on this side. Okay, so what about for um, x equal to minus 2? What's the value of y then? Um, so maybe that's about there. So we'd get 1 over minus 2, like minus a half. Oh. So minus a half is is somewhere down here. Mm -hmm. So um, is this curve on the right, on the left correct? No. Try to take some time to go over the work you've covered at school so far. You saw there that I was expected to know some trigonometry from A level maths. Also know what's in the course that you're applying for. It doesn't look very good if you get to the interview and you don't really know what the course is about. And I don't just mean the subject in general. Take a look at what the course covers and which modules you'd be studying. You may want to discuss a particular part of the course that interests you with the interviewer. Right, so yeah, we, we don't really have time to um, finish this off. We actually need to do a little bit more work about looking at the gradient as well, about what happens at the asymptote. But, um, okay. Let's move on and, uh, um, and talk a bit about your personal statement. Your personal statement, it's one of the things that got you the interview, so you'll probably be asked about it. So it's a good idea to reread it before the interview, so you know what you wrote. For a Comsky interview at Queen's, you're not going to be quizzed on your personal statement, but you will be expected to elaborate on some of the points that you made. Now this is not to catch you out, but it's to give you the chance to demonstrate that you're really interested in the subject. Because if you're not, well, you're not going to enjoy three years of studying it at Cambridge. So uh, you, you, um, you mentioned in that that you were interested in sort of uh, videoing and video blogging. So tell me a bit about what you've been doing. Uh, so I make a lot of computer science related videos for YouTube. Um, I've got quite a few programming tutorials on there. Um, uh, mainly like web related languages. I'm quite interested in, in uh, the like the the website of things because I think that's quite important. Okay. Uh, so uh, you you said you said so these programming language tutorials. Tell me about one that you did recently. What was it about? Um, the last one I did was PHP. Um, and I most of them they're just like an introduction to the language to try to help other people. Um, and I plan to do some more advanced ones uh, when I get a chance. So, um, uh, how do you decide when you're when you're doing these videos what you're going to put in? How do you how did you decide how you're going to explain PHP to somebody else? What what's your thinking process? 
Um, I watched a lot of the other ones that are already on the internet and tried to figure out why they weren't as good as they could have been. Practice talking about your subject and maybe try to arrange some practice interviews. This will work better if you do it with people you don't know very well. And this can help you get used to talking about your subject and putting your thoughts into words as you work through problems. So say, say I gave you the hotline into Google, right? And you've got the, you've got the whole YouTube and engineering team here, maybe on teleconference. And um, uh, you can sort of tell them, you know, what new features they should provide in YouTube to try and help you do this kind of quality assurance. What, what, what things do you think you might ask them to build? Um, so people can already leave comments, but if you could sort of have like a questionnaire style system mm -hmm. where people are forced to answer specific questions, maybe that could work. It, it's useful to know like when people have stopped watching the video. That's one of the statistics that they provide. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can you can figure out which bits people aren't interested in okay. and, and try to change that for the next one to, to keep them engaged for longer. Do you, how do you think Google would build functionality like that? How, how would it actually work in practice? As you can see, the topic of the interview is based on my personal statement and the questions are all relevant to the direction that the conversation is taking. When you hear ridiculous Oxbridge interview questions like, would you rather be an apple or a banana? They sound crazy and intimidating, but that's because they're taken out of context. I'm sure out of all of the crazy questions you've heard, the ones that are actually real made a lot more sense at the time. You're just missing the 20 minutes of conversation that happened before the question was asked. Now you mentioned on your uh, personal statement that you're interested in programming languages and uh, Java particularly. Yeah. How do you compare Java and PHP? What are the relative advantages and disadvantages of each language? Um, PHP is generally uh, a lot easier just to quickly get something up and running. Uh, Java, it's, it's like it has a bit more overhead, but for a big project, I think Java is, is more manageable. Where do you see that overhead coming from? Um, like PHP is it has object oriented features but it doesn't force you to to be as like object oriented as Java does where you need to, to make uh, classes and have packages and things like that for even if you just want to write one line of code. I've been asked some detailed questions about comparing PHP and Java but that's because I said I was interested in them in my personal statement. If you want to apply for computer science, do not worry if you haven't done a lot of programming, you'd just be asked different questions. Read around your subject in your spare time though, you should be able to demonstrate a genuine passion for your subject that extends further than an A-level course, and you may be able to discuss particular parts of the subject that interest you in the interview if you show an interest in them. So could you describe for me the ways in which types are used in both Java and PHP? Um. Java is a lot stricter with types because PHP you don't have to to tell you don't have to give it variables types it just seems to figure it out itself. Um, Java it, uh, is it called statically typed? Mm -hmm. um, you you need to you need to define it for every variable. These are not the questions I got asked in my real interview three years ago, and they're not the questions you'll be asked either. The interviewers are there to get the best out of you, so don't panic when you hear about what other people have been asked. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much, Jake. We've just about run out of time. So, um, uh, before we finish, is there, are there any questions that you want to ask us that um, have come up or about the process? The interview will end with a chance for you to ask any questions you may have. You don't have to ask anything. By this point the interview is over, this bit is not a test. And if you don't have a real question you're probably better off not asking anything instead of coming up with something stupid on the spot. Don't ask anything that can easily be answered by looking in the prospectus or looking on the website. And you probably don't want to ask about the interviewer's research because it's not really relevant to your application. And they don't have time to tell you about years worth of research. The next interviewee is probably sitting outside by now. Great. So I think you've got um, one more interview today and then your thinking skills test this afternoon. So yeah. best of luck and it's very nice to meet you. Thank you. you and, uh, thanks very much. Remember that the interview adds to the rest of your application. The interview alone is not going to make or break your chance of getting in. So relax and be yourself. Good luck with any interviews that you have. I hope this has helped give you a better idea about at least what a Komsky interview is like. If you have more questions about admissions and interviews at Queen's, then you can email the admissions office. They'll be happy to help. 
Same goes for other colleges and I'm sure the universities have something very similar. To learn more about life at Cambridge from my point of view, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching.